If you look at the world economy and if you look at some of the challenges out there, you look at negative rates, you look at uh, these you know, lower for longer interest rates and central bank policy, how difficult is it to run an insurance company in these challenging times? Obviously, these uh, times are quite uh, challenging for uh, the whole uh, financial industry. It's more challenging for the banking industry than for the insurance industry. Um, on our side, we are very well prepared to, to, to this world. As you know, I spent a few years in Japan. I always thought that one day the Japanese scenario would come to, to Europe and to the rest of the world. I think that now we are really in the Japanese uh, scenario. Um, we did a lot of things to, to, to prepare, mm -hmm. uh, generally to, to cope with this environment for a long period of time. Let me give you a couple of examples, but uh, a couple of years ago we exited from uh, Netherlands, Belgium, and uh, we sold a very significant uh, uh, book of life insurance in Germany. I remember that a couple of years ago, uh, a few people told me that maybe we were selling at the lowest uh, point in terms of interest rate, and uh, actually we were right to do it. It was a, it was a great timing. When you look at, uh, at the world, it's obviously um, it could be uh, dangerous because low and negative interest rates, if it goes together with the recession of the economy, it's becoming quite risky. When you are in charge of a business, you need to be at the same time cautious and optimistic. So I am convinced that at the end, we will manage the risk. I think it's very important not to enter into recession. It means that uh, economy has to grow again yeah. in the States, in Europe. And to do this, I think that uh, you need to, especially in Europe, you need to lower tax to unlock uh, the energy of entrepreneurs. This is the only way to grow the economy. If you look at your priority for the next three years, and if you look at regions where you want to grow, either through M&A or organically, where do you want to focus on? Where do you see the most strength for Generali? You know, the DNA of Generali is definitely Europe. Uh, as you mentioned, we are strongest uh, since the acquisition of uh, Tranquilidad in Portugal in Western Europe. But as you said, we also have a leadership position in Eastern Europe. For us, Europe is a great opportunity. It's a very wealthy uh, place in the world. Uh, people are getting older and older, and they have more and more needs uh, to, be, to be addressed, to be, to be covered, uh, long-term care, pension, uh, health care, and so on, and so on, and, and wealth management as well. So these are great opportunities for the insurance business and the asset management business in Europe. But is this through organic or m and You know, lower interest rates going to force a big consolidation phase in your industry? Yes, it's both organic and m and uh, I think it's really important to have an organic growth. Uh, if you have no organic growth, it means you are not successful. And if you are not successful, you will not compensate with m and uh, m and are an accelerator, but only if you, are, if you are successful. We are successful in Europe because we are growing in Europe. And we would like m and to help us accelerate, further accelerate our growth in Europe. And I'm convinced that we will find the right opportunities. Uh, Mr. Dunet, talk to me a little bit about your finances. So you also issued your first green bond. Why green? I think it's uh, really important. First of all, it's uh, another evidence of the strong commitment of the Generali Group to sustainability. We are one of the very few uh, Italian groups uh, part of the uh, sustainability Dow Jones uh, yeah. index. Uh, we have a strong commitment to sustainability and it was very important for us to issue this green bond, which is the first uh, ever for an insurance group in Europe. Uh, it was a great, a great success. Uh, we used this green bond to buy back uh, some um, subordinated bonds mm -hmm. maturing in 2022. It was a good operation in terms of uh, risk management to, to better uh, manage our, our maturities for subordinated bond. It was also an opportunity to reduce our debt by 250 million, another 250 million debt reduction. And at the end, uh, after uh, 
uh, nine months, we have completed our plan in terms of uh, debt reduction and cost of the debt reduction because the interest expenses after nine months right. have been reduced by 164 million. So what's your focus now? Is it giving back to shareholders? Or is it, again, I go back to the M&A, you know, because there's so much talk about consolidation. It, uh, do you feel like you'll be a target? Do you feel like you need to fend people off by, by proving your good results? No, I think that definitely the priority for, for, for the use of the, the financial resources we have is growth. We are going to invest in growth, both organic and uh, M&A. Uh, we are going to do it because this is what is good for our group. This is what our shareholders are looking for. So we are going to grow and we're going to find the growth opportunities. It's a great uh, timing for us mm -hmm. to, uh, to grow. I don't believe in big consolidation. Okay. Uh, for many uh, reasons, risk management, regulation. On the other hand, uh, I think that there will be uh, some aggregation in the insurance uh, and asset management market, uh, especially in Europe. In Europe, you have 4,000 insurance companies. Some of them will not be able to, uh, will not be strong enough to, to, to deal, to cope with the low interest rate, negative interest rate for so long. So there will be some aggregation. Definitely, we will be proactive in this uh, aggregation. Um, talk to me about Brexit. I ask you every time, and it's been three years that I've been asking about Brexit, and every time you say, look, it's having no impact on your business. But c could there be potential UK companies that would be interested you know, to buy? Would they be part of the M&A consolidation, even if you don't believe in, in big consolidation? When you look at the insurance business, definitely UK is not part of our priority. Uh, we prefer continental Europe because we uh, are closer to the distribution model of continental Europe, which is more a captive agents uh, distribution yeah. model. Uh, so we are not looking at uh, insurance uh, opportunities in the UK. Obviously, talking about the asset management, it's completely different. We could be open uh, to look at uh, asset management opportunities in, in UK because uh, it's a great place for this. Because what? Because of the names, brand recognition, or because of something? No, because else? of the you know uh, our strategy in terms of asset management is based on acquisition okay. of skills, expertise, okay. competence. As you know, in London there are m many uh, uh, s very smart people in the in the asset management industry. So we we would look at any opportunity that help us to uh, to build up our asset management capability.